everybody, it's Bruce with the Bowski Studio. Thanks for joining me today for another plein air adventure. Going over to a barn that I saw the other day. The light right uh, now is pretty good for it, so it's only a few miles from the house. We're going to check it out, see what we can get into. I'm going to be painting the uh, barns right over there on a 9x12 uh, panel that I've toned and I'm going to start the sketch with uh, raw umber like I normally do to nail the shadows and that sort of thing so I won't be chasing uh, the shadows because it's 730 in the morning so light can shift pretty fast and I don't want sh you know shadow angles in the uh, wrong direction so I want to thank you for joining me and if you're not a subscriber I invite you to subscribe for more cool content for everyone else that's been a subscriber from the beginning Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm over 500 now for uh, subs, and uh, I appreciate all that. Okay, let's get started. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Uh, just, of course, a heads up. Obviously, you know it's going to be a little bit of a longer video. I'll be doing a lot more uh, explaining on site of my thought process uh, with painting. So let me know what you think for the format of the video and see if I'll do them in the future. I try to try different effects of how to build a video to give you uh, viewers a good experience and to learn something. So uh, your input on how you like it would definitely help me in uh, producing future videos. So as usual, most of the time I start with my umber sketch to nail the drawing and shadows. Each subject is going to present its own level of uh, challenges. So depending on uh, what I'm working on will determine how I start the painting. But typically it is with this umber sketch. And it really just facilitates a quick access to uh, a view of my scene and how I feel about the design and that sort of thing. And sometimes I, I block in with local color too. So try different things. And this barn is right by my house, like I said. A lot of, a lot of views I have around me. The challenge, of course, is when I go driving around is if I'm in one location at a certain time, I always wonder, ooh, what's happening over, you know, five miles away, two hours later. Um, just got to go with what you're looking at at the moment and uh, check out other views another day. Getting the darker values. And you can see just right away you get such a 3D view of a value thing of your painting. It's really quite awesome to paint this way. Just cutting around the windows of the uh, barn, being careful not to offset them too much from the original drawing. Trying to keep them somewhat structured like how the building's built without becoming an architectural rendering. Cutting in around the, getting some darker values in the tree basic shapes. It's really kind of a cool little area. I could see this being a Nice subject for a couple different paintings because of different angles that you can uh, look at the scene. Might have to go revisit and walk into the field that I was next to and see if I get a more interesting angle. All right, we're going to go to some uh, on site uh, commentary. Okay, I got the uh, drawing in, and uh, I took some liberties over on the uh, right-hand side here to open that up a bit, so it just wasn't blocked. Maybe the viewer can go back in there, and I'm not continuing the grass all the way. I'm leaving a little opening right bottom right corner, and try to get some movement back into the painting. Now I'm going to start adding some color. Uh, the drawing took 15-20 uh, minutes, nailed all the shadows, especially in here and over here. I really like those uh, shadows, and of course they're going to change as I start painting, and uh, let's get rolling. Now my idea to start with the uh, white is to give a key for the rest of the painting, like 
Um, it can go both ways, but it tends to be a good starting point to have your – nothing's going to be brighter than that, obviously. So that's why I started with that. Now I'm going to move on to the uh, dark side of this barn here. Trying to mix it, I'm going to mix up a dark from primaries so it has a little color rather than just use umber. A little ultramarine blue, some cad yellow, I want kind of a warm brownish. Just a little bit of white to. I don't want the shadow too dark. And I'm going to test near the white there. And from my vantage point, it's pretty dark. So that's too light. Do I always do a test stroke before I commit to the mixture? Really getting some more blue and the cad red in there. Now I'm going to try it below the previous stroke. Two blue, a little more red. Now I'm going to add just a touch of the umber. Especially where this. Okay, I'm going to go with this. It looks like it's a little darker to me in the scene, but I'm going to go for kind of an average because I don't have a lot of keyed areas yet. So as I go along, I'll adjust. I can push it darker. Yes, I could start too dark and then uh, lighten it up, but sometimes you might have the danger of starting to key everything else too dark and then have to lighten everything. So I'm just going to try this and see what happens. In the mixture that I made, I'm subtly having shifts. And you see I danced around with the strokes. I didn't just fill it in. Now, next to those strokes, I'm putting in other strokes. Maybe a little more red. And when I cut around the windows, I'm still going to, before I lose track of them, sometimes we can cut around and then as I'm going to just do some basic measurements to make sure I didn't lose them getting off center too much. And uh, now I'm going to work on getting darks in here on time lapse. Now I'm going to mix up a color for the uh, roof of this barn here. Seems like an easy one to uh, get correct. And then I'll move on to areas where it might have a little more of a challenge in getting the tone that I want. I see it as a little warm gray, way too light. Darkening up. On the palette, of course, it looks dark, but then you get it in comparison. So again, next to that previous stroke, getting there a little darker. And when you get the correct color and you see it on your palette, it's kind of like, wow, what the heck? What I'm going to experiment with too, probably in another painting, is on the palette in a little area adjacent to the edge, I'll put these little strokes that I want to match against to, like just a little dab with a flat and put it on the palette, and then when I mix up another tone, I can test it there first before I uh, keep having to go back and forth here. I don't know. Might be an idea. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot.
And I'm just using uh, some refined linseed oil today. And that's it. Now when I'm working over here, I want to make sure the angles of the roof match. I want to be careful of that. What you put, could probably do if you were in a real hurry with the painting, but you really wanted to get some accurate uh, color notes, is you could just like say, you know, okay, I got the correct color. Quickly write down what you mix to get to get there. Mix up the green next to that. Put a little patch in the sky. Put a little patch next to that. Kind of like a patchwork. Just put little patches in critical areas. Where you know you might have trouble if you take a picture and the camera distorts the color. Again, trying to vary the gray a bit. If a little bit of the tone of the panel comes through, I'm not worried about that. I'm actually now going to get a little bit darker in certain areas. There is like a some panels in the in, like skylights in the in the roof there, but it's hard to realize what they are far away. I've just have seen them before, so I think I'm just gonna not try to suggest them, but just create like a metal roof effect. Just kind of really getting some deeper tones here and there. I'm not gonna go too crazy. until I have other comparisons marching along here, so to speak. So for now, I'm gonna leave that and start uh, getting other tones in here. Like where I have this dark where I like it, now I'm gonna mix up a tone for the front of that. Mixing up some cad red and some umber for the red barn. Reds can be pretty brutal if you're not careful. Sometimes I usually use terps a lot of times lately uh, for thinning the paint and the painting as I go along, but I'm really I like I prefer. I really find that I like uh, the oil really facilitates the paint blending well and flowing. Try, I'm going to try to vary it. the strength of the red here and there to suggest as paint fades like you might see in real life. Save the shadow of the eave there. And every so often, I'm trying to really get in the habit too. Sometimes we get excited, we're cruising along, just getting in the zone, painting. But I'm really going to try to step back at certain points and study. Like when I really get excited about where the painting's going, I think that's the time to stop and reflect and make sure that you don't have any odd areas kind of uh, not happening or whatever. That because of your eyes being glazed over with the good parts, you don't notice the bad, so the old-fashioned pause and reflect here, and I'm really liking that popping going on. I'm about uh, 40 minutes in here, and the key is not like, oh, I want to paint fast, you know, I want to just whip these things out, but there is something to be said about learning techniques for efficiency and speed when you're really trying to capture something quickly. Um, like for instance, I just lightly suggested where I wanted clouds because uh, the clouds move quickly, but I can still steal clouds from other areas of the sky to get the essence of what the clouds are doing right now and put those in because I, 
I think I do like the movement of the uh, clouds there. And uh, now I've got the uh, barn highlight there in. Now I'm going to work on the shadow side of the roof there. And unfortunately, this barn's like got a really long roof coming down. I think I might just suggest the side of the barn right in there, even though you don't see it because it seems really tall or whatever. So let's go ahead and the trick is trying to avoid a tangent right here. Might not be enough to suggest that it's the end of the roof, but we'll leave it for now. You can always paint it out. So now this is like a cooler gray because starting to mix in, uh, you know, getting a reflection from the sky and just the natural color of the roof. So testing some areas, especially against. All right, let's. Uh, Strongest line I see right here where it curves how it attaches to the upper part. There's a dark line. Trying to not just blend all the color together, trying to have some variety. A little more oil in the brush to get it fluid. I can decide then if it's uh, going to be the final final look to the shadow of that and I'm gonna dirty up now that I have more of a comparison see but now that I have a kind of light you got to be careful because you got to have your paint a little bit darker than you think you need because it's going to be mixing with the light tones underneath it's a little darker. I'm going to leave that for now. Work on this rusty, rusted, rusty kind of looking roof. I'll get that out. <laughs> and we'll go from there. Now with this roof here, you know, you can get a kind of a straight line like with your brush and if you happen to go a little crooked you can always clean it up when you cut the trees around there so once I get this in we'll be uh, working on getting some local color on the trees so we start building up some more areas for comparison and that'll facilitate better color matching and effects that you want I'm not too overly, sometimes these metal roofs get a super glare on them and that could be interesting in certain effects like maybe backlighting or uh, rim lighting of a subject and uh, you want to emphasize. But in this case, I'm going to play it down because everything else, it's at such an angle that can seem confusing. If it looks confusing in real life, it could look really confusing in a painting. So, I'm not going to go crazy with it, just kind of suggest it's definitely a little more bluer reflecting the sky than this roof, which now that I'm getting some colors I'm, I kind of like on this other roof, I'll still have to go a little bit warmer and darker on the other roof. but. I'm going to resist that until I get some uh, green on the trees. Some detail. Being careful to follow the angle of the roof. Don't get so excited you're just whipping them in there. It has to follow the structure. And where these two meet, I'm taking some of the color that I blocked in here. Soften it just a bit. Okay, now I'm going to mix up some green for the trees. 
And don't go too crazy with uh, getting your greens too light sometimes because uh, don't forget some uh, trees just are naturally dark leaves and so they're going to absorb light. And uh, I have a green I kind of like. I mixed up ultramarine blue, cad yellow uh, medium, some cad red in there and a touch of umber here and there. So I'm just going to try to, especially against the roof, that's where I want to work first to determine, like I mentioned before, about that I'm going to have to muddy up that this light tone right here. And that's okay. You know, you think you nail it, and you don't. But over time, if you keep working, like how I started out, get your easy tones in there first that you think you can nail, give you a keys for the rest of the painting, then over time you'll get better and better at it. I like a very naturalistic painting. I really, that's the goal for me right now. Plain air painting is, uh, for me, learning to, to match my colors to what I see in nature as much as possible with leaving about 20% maybe that I want to push or reduce chromatically a color for the uh, sake of the painting. But overall, I, like, I relish the idea of trying to match what I see. And once I feel I get a toolbox of colors in my mind, then I can express myself a little more and be a little more suggestive maybe in the future. But I was attracted to seeing because of the colors I saw. So why make up, get it too, say, high keyed? Just not into that. I'm not going to spend too much time in one spot and over overthink it. Especially looking at it too much I'm just trying to glance at it and then come back to the palette so I can get a real feel of what I'm seeing at that moment and I like how this dark will offset the edge of the building I love doing that in a painting as we probably, as probably all know in my work I tend to have a lot of darks against lights See, I'm leaving some ground areas. Now, when I come back in with the highlights, the shift isn't super great in value of the highlights. Just having some fun here. Okay. Get the idea. Now I'm going to work on the rest of the trees. Okay, now I'm going to try to work on the sky, which is pretty cool right now. I don't, let's pan this up, see if I can get the softness of the clouds and not mess it up too much. Pick out what I want, see how it goes. Gonna mix up some color first and then uh, get some base tones in. Okay, here we go with the sky. Cutting around the uh, cloud shapes I kind of sketched in, picked out what I wanted. Not going too big for super thick paint right now. I wanted to get, I can always manipulate it. And tricky because the sky is so ethereal, it changes so quickly. I want to cut around those trees, but I'm not going to do it with this. I'm going to get a smaller brush in a moment. I'm just trying to get up to the shapes. Barely touch into them so I don't sully my paint. This is looking quite nice so far. I'm pretty happy with it. Temptation is, as you're, you got your shapes of the clouds you wanted, others come into play. You start chasing clouds, be careful that, I mean, there could be one that really presents, but you also don't want to get crazy with them. You want to try to not have it too busy, depending, you know, for what you want 
the goal for you painting in terms of what your subject matter, your main actor, you want to, to evoke the time of day. You're not a slave to exactly. We're interpreting, taking paint that is hard to sometimes mix in the moment to get what you want. So you want to watch out for similar size objects like that there. I stopped painting over here because I liked how it was going behind trees. So we'll make this one kind of smaller. Okay, now I'm going to get a little white into this mixture. A little bit of cad yellow pale. And I'll go over my palette I'm using uh, after. Okay, now comes the challenge. That is getting the effect of these clouds. Some warm tones in there. Now the clouds were really quite a challenge and stuff. There's so many different ways you can try to uh, approach them. Here I just tried to paint some lighter tones up against the sky just a little bit so blend blended just a bit and it was a challenge and what are you going to do? You just got to go for it and try to learn and uh, grow from the experience. These clouds are proving to uh, get to me quite a bit here. It's very difficult. I'm usually uh, not used to doing clouds, but I purposely am attempting this to expand my horizons, which we should all do. So I'm trying to find those warm highlights. Of course, I'm working with a kind of a flat brush here, and clouds are so billowy and cotton ball-y that risk is you want to soften everything and I'm trying to find a balance. Take a softer brush and kill some of the edges if I need to, but hopefully I don't mess this up too much. They're looking really pretty awful right now. Happens, you know. What are you gonna do? Uh, tricky. I think the lesson here is to just go out on a day like today and work on nothing but clouds. I think overall they're a little heavy. They're kind of getting there. Soften up later after I get everything else I want in there. Like these will have to be really softened up. That's kind of far off in the background there. That's why you come out and play in air paint to see what's going on in life. And uh, not everything's going to be turning out great, you know? All right, I'm going to leave the clouds for now. Get some edges of the trees meeting the clouds uh, and the skyline worked out. Now it's when I'm taking the opportunity to, to uh, clean up some details in the shadows of the buildings. Cleaning up some edges, working around the windows, getting the tones of the windows in there to sit back onto the side of the barn, so to speak. And uh, then I'll progress further with the painting afterwards. Just kind of going to strike in. 
see what I get against what I have. Just a touch of thinned out paint. Get something I like against. There's like striations in the grass. I'm trying to mimic those. And actually sometimes, I don't know, you know, uh, it's not that I don't like the subject anymore, but you know, you got a lot you're processing in your mind as you're working on this stuff. The painting, the distractions around you, cars, that sort of bugs maybe. Haven't had any bug issues, but a lot going on and your attention can wander. And then at a certain point you're just not contributing to the painting anymore and you'll do more harm than good if you keep working on it. Ideally if you're near your home, which a lot of people are usually going out driving around, better off just going back to the scene and uh, doing another session. And I'll build on this field in the next session I'm trying to Key too is if you're working in multiple sessions, try to end on a point where you know I don't want any too hard of edges or anything. Everything looks kind of good. Not too concerned, and then I'll get some highlights on the grass and call it good for today. Okay, palette today. The usual we have the raw umber. Titanium white, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cad yellow, cad yellow pale, cad red, alizarin crimson, and I used uh, refined linseed oil for uh, putting into the paint. And uh, that's what we got. I want to show you a modification I made for the uh, my Gorilla paint box because when you paint inside the lid, of course, you have these things in the way. These little holders. And I originally had a little nail right there that just kind of, you would take out a panel, put it right on that nail. But now I've taken cup hooks and that holds the panel in there like that. And it works pretty good. And of course, what happens if you leave them up like this when you close the lid this part will hit that and it won't close all you have to do is turn them to the left or right and now they're flush level works out pretty good okay i want to thank you for joining me this concludes this plein air adventure and boy was it the clouds pretty darn tricky i'm not really good at them and uh, as you can see they're all over the place and moving frequently but Got to learn sometimes, so this is the one. I do like the barn a lot, and if it's nice like today, I will be coming back tomorrow to, uh, if it's tacked up enough, uh, probably a couple days, not sure, uh, to work on the grass some more. Just got some local color on there, and uh, yeah, but that's the uh, part of these adventures is to learn something new, and I don't want to become complacent in my painting, so uh, thanks for joining me, and again, if you're not a subscriber, I invite you to to uh, subscribe and until the next adventure bye